Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. It has been a while, hasn't it? It's been a little while, it's been a hot minute. Uh, of course, we've had another international break. You know, I'm not going to start the video with a three, four minute rant like I usually do when we're during a, an international break, you know, telling you how much I adore it. I hate it! But on a serious note, is it just me or does anyone else think it's come around a lot quicker this year? Two international breaks already and we've not even hit double figures in terms of games this season. I don't know whether I'm just noticing it more or we're just noticing it more because Sunderland have gone into an international break for the second time running top of the league. Just thought I'd drop that there. <laughs> but yeah, it's probably just a little bit more noticeable because Sunderland are actually doing well and uh, usually it's a welcome break, isn't it? But either way, let's get into the video. As you've noticed by the title and as the title suggests, there has been huge rumours recently surrounding former Sunderland man John Henderson, otherwise known as Hendo. Um, now, I know this was a rumour that came around probably just over a week or so ago now, and I wasn't really going to touch it because it came from one incredibly unreliable source, and it would have just been straight up clickbait, which I guess to a degree it still kind of is, but just because there's been more reports um, suggesting that we've at least made some kind of contact, I thought I'd at least bring it to your guys' attention. Uh, also, in other news, we have brought in an assistant manager, finally, um, you know, usually when you bring in a new coach, a new head coach, a new manager, they bring along their own staff. That isn't what happened with uh, with, with Regis Labrice. He'd come on his own. And of course, we still have Michael Proctor and, um, and Mike Dodds. Now, I think Mike Dodds is going to remain an assistant head coach as well. Uh, and Proctor is just going to be a, a first team coach. And of course, you've got the goalkeeping coach as well. Um, but yeah, it was usually they bring their own, don't they? So it was quite a strange one for us to not let him. Well, I don't think it was not a case of not letting him. We just wanted to select another um, uh, assistant head coach. I'm presuming that Regis would, would absolutely uh, have been informed about this and he would have probably been at the heart of the decision making as well. You know, he wants to know who he's working with and stuff like that. So I presume that he had a level of influence on it. But we will get into that as well. But we'll start off with the Jordan Henderson rumours. So about a week or so ago, there was rumours that, you know, he's unsettled at Ajax. You know, of course, he did go to Saudi Arabia, he was at Al Atifak. And I think he only had 20 odd appearances there before he left. He quit. He was reportedly on 350,000 a week. Then he's gone to Ajax. I could only presume that um, that he would have taken a massive wage drop. I can't see Ajax paying that amount of money for Jordan Henderson, with no disrespect to him. Um, but he will he will still be on a colossal wage, 100%. I think he'll easily be on 100k plus easily. Still, um, you know, he does bring a big value with him, Jordan Henderson, particularly with the club he's played for over the years, of course, captain in Liverpool. He's got a stupid amount of experience now. Um, now, do I think there is truth to this rumour? I think there might well be some form of contact from, you know, from KLD maybe to Henderson's team or however, agents, just to see where he's at, see where his head's at. Do I think it will happen? No, I don't. But would I welcome it with open arms? Yes. I think one... I think in terms of wage structure, he would end up quadrupling or more our highest earner. Would he start every single game in a championship? No, he wouldn't. Not to say he, he couldn't or not to say he's not good enough, but at his age, with no disrespect to Jordan, you know, 34 years of age, over the last season or so, he hasn't played a massive amount of football. And for teams that aren't playing three times a week like you do in the championship, for us to fork out, you know, like I said, quadrupling our highest earner to get Jordan in, and then to only play him here and there or every other game, I can't see that fit in our bill. Unless Jordan did say, and I know a lot of people say, oh, Jordan's a class guy, he'll, he'll take a huge wage cut. We don't know that. We I don't know that. It, it, I think Jordan would happily take a bit of a wage cut, but from drastically going from 350k to what we would probably offer, maybe about 30-odd k, would he take that? I don't know. I know that he might say he's earned a ton of money throughout his career, have more than enough, but you don't know when, when players start earning cheap amount of money, their lifestyle increases in value as well in terms of what they need to dish out for. We don't know. He might have a really expensive lifestyle you know, for his kids or for his family and that needs to be paid for, you know, regardless of how much money you think it is compared to us. Of course, it's a shit ton of money for us, but for him, it might not be as much as we think. So you just don't know, do you? You don't know. So do I think, I, I would, sorry, do I think John Henson would be a good signing? I think it would be an outstanding signing um, to have someone, you know, a homegrown player like John Henderson return the colossal amount of experience. And not just that, he is a quality player. He's absolutely a quality player. Um, and to have him rub off on the likes of Dan Neal, Chris Rigg, that Henderson would be a, is a hero to the likes of Rigg and, uh, and, um, and Dan Neal, of course, uh, all being from Sunderland. Um, but... I just don't know whether I could see it happening. I personally just don't see it happening at all. It would be fantastic. 
Uh, I just don't see us forking out the amount of money that we would that we'd have to, and I think it would be a stupid amount. And also, like I said, it's been the best part of a year, really, where he hasn't had a massive amount of football. Henderson, Jordan, is an absolutely brilliant professional, and he undoubtedly has kept himself fit, like regardless, 100%. But at 34 years of age, to go from not a massive amount of football, even to keep himself fit on the training ground, is so different to being match fit. And to play three times a week in a championship, could he do that? Could he pull that off? I don't know. I don't know whether he could at that age, or at least at the level we would want. But even just having him around and then having him you know, maybe come off the bench here and there, or maybe just play the odd game, maybe as an anchor role uh, every now and then, I think that would be an outstanding signing. Do I think it'll happen? No. I'd, I'd, <laughs> personally, I don't, but I would have him. I know I'm probably saying a lot of contradicting things there, but I just think there's a lot going against this move. Um, I just can't see it happening, personally. But uh, like I say, let me know in the comments down below. Um, like I said, the first rumour from or the first report came from an incredibly unreliable source, so I didn't touch it. But then, of course, once one person sparks the fire, loads of you know different um, outlets start getting involved, and no one has any real concrete evidence at all. Um, I think the Echo might have suggested that we've at least got in touch to see, but I just can't see it happening. I think KLD might have said, right, or, or you know, Speakman or whatever might have said, like, how are you feeling? Would you come here even at a loan spell? Um, but of course, I actually have to pay the bulk, or, 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 or I, I, we just couldn't pay X amount for a player who isn't going to play every single game, which he, he wouldn't. That's, I, I don't think. Not to say he's not good enough. I think a fully fit prime Jordan Henderson is the best player in that Sunderland team, hands down. I think he's an incredibly underrated player. Only a couple of years ago, I did make a video saying how we need to put some respect on the man's name because. He has been criminally underrated for years. He's not just a captain who walks around barking orders and doesn't contribute anything else. He is outstanding at breaking up the play, controlling the play, dictating the tempo, and he's a manager on the pitch and one of the best that's ever done that. But let's not beat around the bush. And I'm not just saying that because he is a Sunderland lad and I do love him. And I'm a, a, you know, a Henderson fanboy. I remember when he was coming through the ranks at Sunderland and we started him off an, uh, as a right winger. And I thought, gee, we've got a player on our hands here. Then we started to shift him into the middle and then he's grown into the player that, that we've seen over the years. You know, winning Premier League, Champions League. You, you don't do that by chance. And then remain a captain at Liverpool. You know, we had, he struggled a lot when he first went to Liverpool at first with a heavy price tag. Very young lad. Then just grew and we just kept on going from step and step and step up and and he's been an outstanding footballer with an outstanding career. So I would love to see him back at the stage of my life in red and white. It would be absolutely incredible. But do I think it'll happen? No. But, uh, but anyway, yes, um, we do have a new assistant manager. Moving on. Pedro Ribeiro, who I don't know a massive amount about. We've got a little bit of a, a statement, which I won't bore you with, but I just wanted to touch upon it. But yeah, uh, Pedro Ribeiro, apparently he's had 18, 19 years worth of coaching experience at his age, and he's only 38. And, it, you know, he's had similar roles. In you know, like Olympiacos, Fenerbahce, Porto. So he has a really good CV and fits the bill of a young coach as well. So it can only add, and seeing him on the training pitch, there's already been a few pictures from the club that have been put out with him chatting with the players and stuff like that. It, it can only add to us, it only add value to give that kind of experience as well. So I'm really pleased with that. Again, I'm not going to I know who the lad is or anything about him, but just from the statement, it feels like we, it fits the bill. And Speakman did say in the statement, you know, we've really had to bide our time and we really want to get the right sort of assistant head coach in alongside Regis. And I'm guessing Regis, like I said, he would have had a, a part to play in that. He would have had a massive influence. Um, yeah, so it's good to see that along the likes of Mike Dodds as well. And I'm glad, by the way, that Mike Dodds is still here. I know there might have been rants and raves and videos in the past, and I guess hindsight's a wonderful thing, but I've never necessarily said that I think Mike Dodds is a dickhead or he's a bad person. I think he's a very real, honest person. But was it was he way out of his depth at the back end of last season? Absolutely. Anyone would be in his, in his situation. But I think he knows the players very well. The players do respect him. They've said it in countless interviews. They do like Dodds and the way that he worked. But he just didn't work last season. He was just thrown under the bus for me. Um, so it's good to have a little bit of familiarity. Sorry, familiarity. Familiar Jesus. It's good for him to have a bit of familiarity, isn't it? Um, Jesus, that took a long time, by the way, I've had to cut that. Why am I struggling with that word so much? But yeah, someone familiar, basically, a familiar face, we'll say that, around the training ground, someone who they know, someone they feel comfortable around. It's good to have those people around still, and it, it seems to be making a positive atmosphere anyway. But anyway, heading into the weekend, Sunday, we have Hull. Uh, what do you think that game's going to go? Uh, how, how do you think that game's going to go, should I say? Um, I'll, of course, I'll probably do a, a preview to that game, uh, maybe the Friday or Saturday, something like that. 
Um, but yeah, that's, that is everything as of right now. If anything else does happen, any more transfer rumours or anything like that, I will make another video for you guys. But I just thought I'd at least touch on it because there has been a lot of rumours over the last week or so. But I hope you guys are okay. hope you're doing well. If you've enjoyed, smash the like button for me. It's massively appreciated. And subscribe if you're new. But for now, take care. Stay jammy.